focus on homosexuality uh, in the Old West. Now, in the heroic and historic accounts of the Wild West cowboy, uh, sexuality, uh, especially homosexuality, is rarely, if ever, mentioned. Uh, well, but the story and presence of gays, lesbians, uh, and transgender individuals in uh, the American West is as old as the Wild West itself. Uh, for example, Native Americans openly recognized and accepted alternative gender. Uh, those who preferred to dress, work, and live as the opposite sex. Uh, many Indian tribes all over North America uh, viewed men skilled at women's crafts and women skilled in uh, male activities as extraordinary people, uh, people that were blessed by the Great Spirit. Uh, and uh, they, uh, the, the Native Americans viewed these individuals as integral, productive, and valued members of their community. uh, communities. Individuals that combined both sexes uh, were known as Bradachis and uh, often held a high rank within the tribal society. Uh, in Lakota culture, the half-man, half-woman, uh, the Wintenke, uh, a man who lived and dressed as a woman, was both accepted and respected. Uh, women uh, in Lakota culture who did not want to marry men uh, and chose female partners instead were known as uh, Kaskalaka. Uh, they were perceived as very powerful beings. Uh, their uh, female relationships were considered sacred relationships. Uh, and these uh, special relationships were united and validated uh, by a rope dance ritual ceremony. Uh, the rope was uh, intertwined between the two lovers, binding the female couple in this life and the next. Now, the earliest gay European frontiersman that I know of, anyways, uh, was William uh, Drummond Stewart, uh, a wealthy Scottish nobleman uh, who, in the 1830s to 1850s, traveled across America hunting big game. Now, Stewart is, in fact, one of the inspirations for the classic 1970 film uh, A Man Called Horse with Richard Harris. Now, Stewart on uh, one of his big uh, hunting uh, game uh, travels, meets uh, French-Canadian trapper Antoine Clement. Uh, they become lifelong lovers. Uh, and, well, their relationship was accepted as no big deal on the frontier. Now, you got to remember women, uh, especially in this point in time, uh, were mighty scarce on the frontier. Uh, and the two men are completely isolated from female contact and companionship uh, for many months at a time. Uh, they share bedrolls, uh, they bed in pairs, and eventually they become lovers. Now, when Stuart returns to Scotland, Clement goes along with him, uh, and uh, they live together for the rest of their lives. Now, for most of the 19th century, uh, society didn't designate people as gay or heterosexual. Uh, these sexual labels or identities don't really crystallize until the 20th century. Uh, the 19th century social world is in fact a type of uh, bachelor's paradise uh, and all-male society uh, in which same-sex relationships uh, were an acceptable activity. A male bonding uh, included sexual activity on the frontier. Uh, this sexual activity was known as mutual solace. Uh, men on the frontier would settle into partnerships. Uh, these became known as bachelor marriages, and it was no big deal. Now, these bachelor partnerships or marriages did not interfere with heterosexual relationships when women were available. Remember, they're mighty scarce uh, in the early days of the American frontiers. Uh, cowboys, frontiersmen, lived in reality, a harsh reality, not in psychological or psychosexual theory. Uh, and these people were virile, physically active, uh, and when outdoor life brought them exclusively together, uh, sex was sex. 
a human need that had to be fulfilled. Uh, men and women were allowed to express same-sex intimacy. Uh, as I mentioned, they sh uh, shared the same beds at night. Uh, they would often sleep locked in each other's arms in order to keep warm uh, and spoke of their devotions to each other. This type of relationship uh, was both accepted and encouraged on the frontier. People needed each other to survive, uh, and there was absolutely no shame in it. Now, during the gold rush, uh, the gold rush in both California and uh, later in Alaska, the prospectors often challenged gender roles, uh, and erotic connections were openly displayed. Uh, all male stag dances, polkas, waltzes, quick steps, square dances were very common. In these dances, men would take the part of women, and the prospectors whooped it up with these whiskey soaked female substitutes. Some of these substitute women enjoyed their female roles so much, they decided to dress and drag and live their lives that way. Uh, there are numerous journal and diary entries from the Gold Rush periods that tell of men in drag that decide to pitch up tents and work as prostitutes. Uh, and these men in drag did a brisk business pleasuring the miners, at least until the actual women showed up to replace them. Uh, these actual women, dance hall girls, uh, at the local saloons, would often form intimate and close female relationships with each other. Uh, so much so uh, that journal entries from the period, for example, a, uh, a George Parsons from uh, Tombstone, Arizona, circa 1880, complained in his journal about all the lesbian activity. Now, exclusively gay cowboys and lesbian cowgirls would often use code words to let each other know their sexual orientation or preference. Uh, for the men, uh, it was the evocation of the great American poet Walt Whitman. Uh, the name dropping of the famous American poet, uh, the use of his imagery and writings, uh, as well as quotations from the Greek myths, especially Damien and Pythias, was a signal to other cowboys that they shared a preference for men. Uh, for the women, uh, quotations from the great uh, Hellenic lady poet Sappho uh, was an expression of a woman, uh, woman's fondness for female companionship. Now, a few old cowboy songs from the era breached the subject of homosexuality. Uh, for example, a song called The Lost Partner, uh, which was written sometime in the 1870s. Uh, this song goes, We loved each other in the way that men do, and never spoke about it, Al and me. And knowing that our love was so true, more than any woman's kiss could be. Uh, now, in his exhaustive 1948 study of male sexuality, uh, sexologist Alfred Kinsey wrote uh, that there is a considerable amount of sexual contact among the older males in the western rural areas. Uh, Kinsey continued in his report, it is a type of homosexuality which was probably common among the pioneers and men of the great outdoors. Uh, today, uh, this type of activity, according to Kinsey, uh, is found among ranchmen, cattlemen, prospectors, and lumberjacks. Now, a retired Oklahoma cowboy who rode the range in the late 19th and early 20th century told Kinsey uh, that all but two out of ten men uh, engaged in homosexual activity. Uh, at first, uh, they would mutually solace each other by uh, mutual masturbation. And as trust and friendship matured, uh, they would graduate to more intimate uh, activities or behavior. These cowboys lived for months on the open range with no women available to them. As I mentioned, these people are young, they're virile, and they have only each other as sexual outlets. The knowledge of homosexuality amongst cowboys, uh, the ultimate image or symbol of the American folk hero, may be upsetting to some people, uh, but it was a simple fact of life on the frontier 
that should not be neglected or ignored by Western scholars and historians. Now, the quintessential movie cowboy, the great Randolph Scott, uh, may have been a very macho frontier hero on the silver screen, but in real life, Mr. Randolph Scott was a very effeminate southern gay gentleman, uh, reminiscent of Tennessee Williams or Truman Capote, for example. Uh, Scott lived together with the great Cary Grant. Uh, they lived together as happy lovers for several years in the late 1930s and early 1940s. All of Hollywood knew about their love affair, and nobody really gave a damn about it. Uh, Grant and Scott uh, kept it private, kept it quiet, uh, and they dated pretty young starlets for movie premieres and Hollywood parties. Uh, even the press knew about their uh, sexual relationship, uh, but the uh, press respected privacy back in those days, uh, and uh, their homosexuality was kept out of the newspapers. The partnership or bachelor marriage between Randolph Scott and Cary Grant was no big deal in Hollywood. Randy, Randy, Randy. All right. With that thought, we're going to take another musical break. Uh, when we return, uh, we're going to get into the traveling Wild West medicine shows uh, that dominated uh, the 19th century. Uh, the Wild West medicine shows were a mixture of entertainment and advertisement that romanticized and exploited an era uh, that was soon to vanish into the pages of history. Uh, but first, some more music. Uh, this is the band uh, with their classic W.S. Walcott medicine show. Stay with us. This is God Rock Radio. 